Hey, best people, it's a crypto sniper. Yes, 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 lots of traveling, lots of traveling from beautiful Cape Town, overnighted in the Karoo and all of that. But uh, I want to talk to you about crypto um, and all of that. So I'm going to do a, something a little bit on the go here. Um, and it's broadly good news. It's broadly good news. Uh, at, well, people will, many of you will say, well, that's a bit after the fact. We have, in fact, been talking about it and biasing bull for quite a long time um, and that you will recover from that correction of the 47 and a half uh, and, and we went right down to about 38 I think at its lowest points generally depending by exchange uh, but Bitcoin has uh, galvanized itself and I'm going to do a technical follow-up to this but I just thought it's probably worth just getting something verbally sort of FaceTiming out to you um, which is just a discussion and you know we can pencil in some more of the detail on the charting aspects uh, in a follow-up video. So, what is, I suppose, the message? The, the message is um, that Bitcoin is in a couple of interesting patterns. First of all, it triggered in an upside HVF. Now, we did push it, uh, put it out only sort of as it was breaking and after the fact on Twitter. Um, it did have a, a little false attempt just before where it started to run. Uh, I sometimes like to refer to them as premature ejaculators, uh, but that's probably not the phrase uh, that's going to get me any favors with the algorithm. But um, it, it, it kind of had a preemptive strike and a little bit of a run and it got slammed. Where did it get slammed? It got slammed back down at the 42 and a half, which as you know, is our neckline uh, draw from the legacy head and shoulders. So if you're a regular follower of these, there's key levels. So it got slammed down there. So it's actually been interacting in an environment where it is tied up by a number of key levels of significance. We've covered this in previous videos, so this is just a super short reminder so that I can build on that. The 47 and a half, big rejection we expected and a pullback. You got it. You ran the 47 and a half. I think you might have got a whisker over 49. There's always an overperformance to the level. That was a legacy neckline of the original 64K high. And then you came down to 38. Now, had you sold at 47 and a half, you could even be buying now at uh, 43s, but you could have bought uh, even in the 30s, at 39 uh, possible. Now, that makes a difference. It does make a difference. It also, even if you said, who knows, Francis may be wrong on this one, and you just deleveraged. If Let's say you had a couple of leverage trades on and you just took off and you just got defensive and you were just investment. That is an exceedingly useful thing. So we pulled down to the 38. Now, what has happened is that 38 has become a head but an inverted head because it's a low on an inverted head and shoulder uh, and we've actually got an upside uh, target on that again depending um, by exchange you'll be in and around uh, on the performance of that pattern you'll be in and around back up at the 48 uh, thousands now the 48 thousand we'll see you revisit our 47 and a half. So remember targets also just get run. So again, you can get a 49, you might even, God forbid, or uh, hopefully, I don't know, get a, a whisker touch through a 50 and get rejected, but it will still be the 47 and a half. It just would have made a marginally higher high and then got uh, rejected again, potentially, after these targets have done. So I don't think you're going to make the 47, you're going to clear the 47 and a half permanently, you know, when you properly break over, hold over, you don't just do a technical run and then a subsequent significant pullback. I don't think you're going to permanently hold over the 47 and a half uh, on the next effort, but I do think you're going to get another number bigger than the 47 and a half and potentially to match the number you got on the first run of the 47 off which was 49 uh, K uh, because generally when you're getting a push and a surge run and a bit of a blow off feet type vibe you will overshoot up to overshoot by 1500 on something that's almost 50 K um, is not actually a lot it's about 3% um, so especially when you're getting a surge and everyone woo ETF or whatever you know was last time now it's going to be yeah, collapse of the dollar collapse of this collapse of the banks collapse of whatever um, now we are actually seeing moderate uh, the dollar performance now right now it's actually drifting so I'm talking as of uh, today which is Thursday uh, and the time here where I am in about UTC 
plus two plus three is nine o'clock in the morning but we have seen um, the dollar it's drifting a little bit but it is also in an inverted head and shoulder on the Dixie so that is telling you that overall the dollar has not been that weak but despite that we're getting the movement up on Bitcoin this could have been supported and helped by the banking situation etc etc I also for all my crypto friends do want to remind you that we've got uh, gold in a fairly big time frame setup that is also setting in an HVF upside setup, but has also had its fair share of, you know, a little bit of false starts, push back into the range, false starts, push back in the range, but its pattern is even larger. And again, I will refer to that with charts in greater detail, but I'm just informing you of that so that you can bear that in mind. Remember the anti-fiat category as a whole. So what what is going on is we we've got a good bitcoin environment with a 48 target what will it mean well it might not overshoot as much because the second time it'll be a le little bit less volatile so what tends to happen is the first time you might make the higher number which was the 49k that was the first time break of the 47 and a half if we were to do 48 700 for example and the kind of it doesn't blow off spike and get slammed it's slightly more and then it trends down um, what you actually would be getting and this I actually hope for that by the way is um, you'll be getting a situation where you're getting reduced volatility uh, especially if it doesn't make a marginally higher high then we have the possibility of a big continuation pattern which is the game that is likely to happen because don't forget with the 47 and a half and the 49 there is a big looming number there which is Bitcoin 50k which is the most significant number between 10 and 100k actually I would argue uh, and then you would probably say 75 and you know and so you drop through all the different uh, key round numbers so 50k is a heck of a big number Let's get the boot down a little bit get away from the plebs um, yeah so with that said 50k is quite a significant number and it's ideal actually if this next move up that we're experiencing doesn't surpass I can't tell you what the market will do I'm just telling you what I would like if it doesn't surpass the previous high of 49 so if we do get through to the 48s uh, and it doesn't surpass or it equals or is lower basically that is a good setup uh, broadly also if it doesn't get as rejected as viciously as it got rejected last time what we could end up then is with and I'm forward forecasting and it's on an on balance of possibilities not even probabilities at the stage because it's early doors but I'm describing what you might want in the technical structure uh, so you know what to wish for sometimes people don't even know what to wish for they just think line go up you don't get that kind of price behavior very often if you look at all your major moves uh, and even on the even on the big time frames where it looks like it's line go up on the four hour if you're looking on the weekly it actually was quite a lot of chop and churn and the winding up so there's always price behavior structure you build staircases when you climb you don't jump onto the fourth floor you build staircases and this is what price behavior does so the way we build the staircase past the 50k level onto and onwards to the next upside is part and parcel of understanding price behavior and becoming a better trader so the reject uh, uh, another rejection sub 49 close but sub that gives us a strong secondary high but not also as hard trends down uh, maybe has a the odds minus spill trend sideways a little bit of a rising wedge a little bit of a spill but doesn't come down as briskly on a momentum basis uh, as it did the first time um, what we'll end up getting is another continuation pattern structure that could occur now all sorts of mayhem might break up and it just might melt up to 50k so that is another possibility you know and you go well through you could also make my more slightly feared one a marginally higher high than the previous time that's a little bit more tricky for us because then what typically tends to happen is you get rising wedges which squeeze out the top if it's bullish which kind of confuse a lot of people a lot of people miss out on those up moves or you could even get a broadening structure um, which is ascending and you can grind along and that's kind of tough it's tough for traders 
and it makes investors sit on their hands and go, what you're doing, what you're doing, you know, the poke the stick thing, a little bit up, a little bit down, generally, you have to watch the grind. Those are not great uh, and easy investing or trading markets. Um, but a reminder, we are in a bull market. Since the 16K low, the original inverted head and shoulders that performed to target, which uh, we provided, um, and the subsequent reaction to the 42 and a halfs and the 47 and a half levels, which are the key legacy levels, is showing us that it is working its way up and it's taking out the fences that were put in its way on the way down. And it has to get you know, the right equipment. It needs the earth moving equipment to blow right through that. Also quite a good performance from Ethereum, um, which was also in an HVF. So we saw across the board and we saw it on total three and total two um, upside structures. So we've been personally positioning fairly strongly um, to uh, the bull side, but on a cautious uh, basis. Because of that dollar, still showing that it's broadly strong. So what's been happening is rates have gone up. So non-farm payrolls happened and everything is freaking awesome. So what is non-farm payrolls? It's the most significant economic number that comes in on in the US on the last, uh, the first Friday, my apologies, of the new month. And in that, uh, unemployment down, income percentage above expectations of course they're very good at managing expectations down so that they can then overperform it's a bit like me saying i can only jump over 10 centimeter height and then jump in a meter um, you can set the benchmark so it looks like overperformance and this is part of a managing the expectations the great game that they are uh, pretty damn good at uh, pulling um, but what i will say is that they've done is that um, they've done such a good job of managing expectations that and they're showing the economy is so strong I don't believe personally a word of it about it you get you know lies damn lies and statistics generally and there's a lot of non-farm payroll numbers that get subsequently re-rated to the downside in later months when no one is caring and watching anymore so the big hoopla law on the release of the number isn't there the state of the show is not there and the eyes are not there when it gets re-rated down but anyway what that does is it reduces expectations for rate cuts and in an environment where the rate cuts expectation reductions are getting reduced what it means is a people aren't going to get the respite they think in interest rate cuts b the bond market remember rate cuts means bond market go up everybody wants debt you've got to have a bullish period in the value of bonds for the rates to go down that's the seesaw i've explained many times who's going to buy all this debt you're underperforming on tax revenues you're starting more and more wars you've never sent more money to the military industrial complex the pharmaceutical industrial complex and uh, the surveillance industrial complex which is essentially the magnificent seven um, from NVIDIA, Netflix, all the social matrices where they are profiling you. So you've never sent so much money in this direction that the actual, the S&P is actually down. Everybody thinks S&P is having a blinder. The S&P is down minus the Magnificent Seven. It's actually down on last year and it's down the year so far. So this is called breadth. When you have a bull market, and now we're talking about a different asset class. When you have a bull market that is not being participated in by the many, it's being participated in by the very few, the very big greedy few. So essentially you have a pigsty with lots of pigs and you have seven mega pigs that just barge their way to the front and scoff all the fruit. And all the little piglets at the back are squealing and yelping and being trodden on and left behind starving and looking lean. This is a lack of breadth in the market. Now you used to get that, they referred to an era of trading as the nifty 50 era, where there was 50 stocks that did exceptionally well. It was like the Detroit car companies, General Motors, General Electric, etc., etc. And that was considered a lack of breadth, breadth because most of the rest of the equities weren't doing too well. That was still 50 stocks doing well. 
We're down to a magnificent seven. Why? Because they get given a currency. When your equity valuation goes so high, it's like a currency. You buy out rivals and you buy out other um, things that you uh, are potentially needing the tech for and you just assume it and you buy it out cheaply with your hyper-valued stock. It's much better than having to have cash uh, reserves because you have an over pumped up stock price which means it's kind of like having a super currency um, that just you, you buy up everything else. So we, what we have is oligarchical monopolies. Anyway, this has moved a long way from crypto. But the key point that I wanted to add in all of this is that what you're actually getting in all of this is you're getting a, an environment where the dollar is possibly going to start being relatively strong to the other fiats. It's already begun that, obviously, on the Dixie against the Euro. But we've had the you know, Argentinian peso has had a collapse so much for Mille and kissing the magic wall. Um, but all that sort of thing is going on. Um, and providing the dollar doesn't become uber dominant, providing the dollar doesn't become uber dominant, um, we should be fine uh, on the Bitcoin creeping higher uh, stuff. However, what you might find is you get a coincident strength period for the dollar at the moment that we are shooting through the 47 and a half going for the 49k and we'll either make that marginally higher high slightly lower high which is better or we'll you know we could have a blow off even further uh, into the 50s before the dollar occurs either of those three outcomes but the bias remains bullish there could be a bit of a rest because the HVF target is close to being made. It was on inside the right shoulder of the structure. And what that could mean is you get a little bit of a dip. So accumulating Bitcoin on dip in this environment is our bias. We're already quite well long um, Bitcoin, but you could top up a, uh, a little bit on moderate leveraged uh, positions. But remember, the dollar dominance uh, threat, providing it's just creeping its way up against the other fiats on the basis of the strong economy of that payrolls numbers that they that's the story they're going to stick with and then the fact that the rates won't keep coming down why there's no bid under the bonds they have to keep them at this levels in fact we need higher rates to allow the debt to devalue there's too much of it scarcity and valuation is inverse proportionality the more scarce you are in other words the less there is of uh, if it, there is of the item the higher the valuation. The greater the is of the item, the lower the valuation. It is quite simple. It's the simplest law of economics, supply and demand. And that's what people are understanding. Okay, I just thought I'd give you that update. We'll do some technical chart updates uh, in a bit. Thanks for watching and uh, yeah, buy us to bull, buy on dips, limit orders are your friend. Very conservative le leverage if you choose to use it. Um, but should be a good uh, few days and it was also cross total so alts will be benefiting as well. Bye for now.